Hi, I'm Raj Nidivali, Director of Professional Services at Zaloni, and today I'm going to talk about how to modernize a data warehouse architecture. I'm going to talk about three things. One, what does a typical traditional data warehouse architecture look like? Two, what are the pain points of this architecture? And three, how to build a modern data lake architecture to alleviate those pain points. Now let's look at a typical data warehouse architecture. We'll go from left to right. On the left, you see the various sources. Typical sources are relational databases, OLTP or transactional systems, and flat files. The data from, the, from these systems then is moved to an ETL server that does transformations. Transformations include data cleanup, like removing bad data, data standardization, like doing date standardizations, lookups to reference tables, joins, as well as other transformations to produce facts and dimensions that can then get loaded to a data warehouse. A data warehouse is typically an MPP database platform, and it serves to host the facts and dimensions at the lower level, as well as aggregates that serve the BI tools for reporting online, as well as analytic or ad hoc queries. Now next, we'll look into the pain points of a data warehouse architecture. All right, now let's look at the pain points of a data warehouse architecture. First, they don't scale up easily. Two, it's difficult to process unstructured data with the data warehouse architecture we seen just a while ago. Three, they are slow to transform and process data. So as the data volume increases, the latency for the final data sets is very high. Four, it's expensive to scale and build more using this platform as they use proprietary software. Five, the, the development cycles are long to say add new data sets or new processes. Now let's look at a data lake architecture that addresses these concerns. Okay, now let's look at the modern data lake architecture. Again, we'll move from left to right. On the data sources, you now see that we have the relational databases as well as the flat files as earlier, but now we can see that data lake also consumes other sources, streaming data sets, whether it's a Kafka stream or a JMS message as well as unstructured data, like log files. Now, when you move towards the data lake, you'll notice that there's one box and it's got multiple partitions. What you'll see as a difference is we now got rid of the ETL server. The data lake handles both storage and compute for you. Within the data lake, data is first moved to a raw zone where the data is as close to your original system, but organized by the sources. Then the transformations that include the data cleanup, data standardizations, joins, lookups, as well as other transformations required are done. And data is then moved to what's known as the enriched zone. Enriched zones can be organized by different domains as appropriate. A data lake also scales on commodity hardware, so you can ramp up this as needed for your organization. The results from the data lake can be consumed straight from your BI tools, which have connectivity to a Hadoop data lake. If they don't have that connectivity, for legacy systems, our friend data warehouse still can be used, where the data from the data lake is first sent to data warehouse, and the legacy BI tools consume it. We now also are able to enable analytics on straight on the data lake using modern tools like R and SAS, as well as other ad hoc query interfaces like Zeppelin. So this is the modern data lake architecture, which eliminates those pain points which regards to scale, being expensive, as well as unable to handle your various data sources. This concludes this. Watch out for the next set of videos regarding this series looking at the Zaloni website.